Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Too Opinionated. I'm so excited today. I have actress, singer, songwriter, and now author, Alicia Witt. So welcome, Alicia. Thank you so much for having me. What a treat. <laughs> I'm so excited to talk to you. I'm actually, I'm actually really excited that I got the entire opening out and didn't, didn't flub it. I'm known <laughs> for flubbing the uh, intro, so I was pretty happy with that. Yeah. See, well, but now, I messed, it, now I messed I it up because I should have, I should have just played it cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, welcome. Thank you so much. This is, uh, I've been a fan of yours. So I was teenager in the early '80s, so. Obviously a little nerdy. So when Dune came out, you had an instant fan. Thank you. Oh. Yeah. I've I've enjoyed uh, watching your uh, your career as it has uh, evolved. You've been in so many different things, and you're such a great musician. Just a real thrill for me to have you on the show. Thank you. That means a lot to me. <laughs> <laughs> um. So so we have to start here. This is where I love to start. Because I'm, I'm very curious about how people got their start. So, talk a little bit about, you know, what made you want to become an entertainer? How did you go about doing that? The first movie, which you just mentioned, Dune, came about totally by, by fate, by coincidence, yeah. or, you know, it was not something that I had any intention of doing professionally. I was only seven, and yeah. I didn't know anybody who did it professionally. I lived in Worcester, Massachusetts, and my mom had taught me how to read and recite a scene from Shakespeare when I was very, very little. And I had ended up on the show, That's Incredible, reciting that scene from Shakespeare. I miss it. John Davidson, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I did that, I was five, and that was fun. I loved it, but I never crossed my mind that that could be the beginning of any sort of a career. I just yeah. thought it was something fun to do in LA. And then two years later, the phone rang and it was the casting director for Dune, Jane Jenkins. And yeah. she had been searching for a child who could play this role of Alia. And for those who are not familiar with the sci-fi novel, Alia has been born with the wisdom of all of these generations of reverend mothers before her. Right. So she can speak like an adult. She has memories going back generations and she's only four. <laughs> so it was a tricky part to cast and they couldn't find anyone. So Jane called That's Incredible to see if they had any recommendations of kids who might have appeared on the show. And they sent her my VHS tape. She called my parents and asked if, if they could bring me to New York to audition for her, which I did. And that went well. And then she said, can you stay another night? Because David Lynch is going to be in town tomorrow. I'd love for you to read for him. And so I did that. And about a week later, got the news that I got the part. And the crazy. crazy thing about it was, I mean, of many crazy things about it, was that of course dune at the time was the biggest budget movie ever made yeah. it was an eight and a half month long shoot in mexico city which is almost unheard of and i got to be there for my role for three months and it was of course it was a great experience and it was so lavish and um and just incredibly fun for a child, especially. I just thought, yeah. wow, why wouldn't I want to make movies for the rest of my life? This is a great thing to do. For me. <laughs> That's um, not usually how it works. No, <laughs> I don't think anything about my life thus far has been the way it usually works. It's been a very unusual career, very unusual life. Yeah. And I, I'm really grateful for it, <laughs> but I, I'm yeah. aware it's not the it's not the norm. Well, and I had I had obviously you you kind of developed that relationship with David Lynch. He brought you into Twin Peaks, and I heard that he kind of wrote that role for you. Yes, the role on Twin Peaks. It that came about 
just because my mom had let him know that I was back in LA. When I was 14, I spent about six months there with my mom getting an agent and starting to audition in person for things. And, and she let him know that I was there and I think was hoping that maybe there was some part on Twin Peaks and there wasn't. So he wrote one and that's amazing. That's why the character was playing the piano because he knew that I did. And yeah, it was amazing. And it was a real gift because at, at that point I hadn't been in anything since June. So all of a sudden being on one yeah. of the most critically acclaimed shows on television was, was very helpful for me to get more auditions and all of that. Yeah, I can imagine. I, um, you've, you've got a fan in um, Sherilyn Finn who, who was on uh, Twin Peaks. She's we're we're lucky enough to be producing the audio drama that she's working with us on. And I was let, I was talking to her about you coming on the show, and she's like, "I love her." Oh, she's awesome. I love her. So I thought that was kind of nice. I didn't know that. That's so sweet. Yeah. yeah. Please tell her good. I love her too, and please send my love. Oh, I she's, will. She's yeah. Incredible. She was so good on Shameless. You did you see well, she her? Was. I did. Oh my goodness. Yeah. She's just, she's dynamite and fearless. And she was obviously so great in Twin Peaks. And, yeah. but then it was such a treat to see her really dig her teeth into that role on Shameless. Yeah. I'm so proud of her. I always looked at her as kind of a, kind of old school starlet type of actress. I think she has that kind of, kind of feel. But yeah, so she was, she's a big fan. So I thought the uh, thought oh, pass that wall. Yeah, that's nice to pretty hear. good. So, so when you were growing up, I mean, did you do theater, play in the band, anything like that in school? I didn't go to school. <laughs> oh, <laughs> going okay. back to the unusualness. Yeah, of so my you life. did the the homeschooling stuff in between uh, work, I would guess. Well, I only did that one movie as as a child. You know, I yeah. I was. I was studying piano and I started competing in piano competitions um, also when I was seven. I didn't even know there was a thing a, a, like a piano competition. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of, if you were looking to have a career as a classical pianist, yeah, the competitions, they're incredibly uh, rigorous and people take them very seriously because if you want to end up going to Juilliard or that sort of thing, yeah. these competitions, as young as you are, they really pave the way for all of that. You start keeping track of how many first prizes you have and how many <laughs> national and international competitions you placed in. And it's crazy competitive. What do they judge you on? Oh, well, that's a wonderful question. That's actually one of the reasons I started becoming disillusioned with them around age 12 or 13. Um, they, I mean, they judge you on the expected things, obviously, hit all the right notes, right. keep the right. rhythm more or less, you know, um, choose, you have to choose pieces that are appropriately difficult. Like if, yeah. if you were a 10 year old and you played a piece that a seven-year-old is playing in competition that would rank you less than sure. say if you played something that was more yeah. advanced um they they also rate you on the musicality the interpretation um and and yet at a certain point i think they also i i noticed that they were starting to take points off for those things because as the pieces get more more complex right there's in a way there's more room for interpretation and expressiveness and sometimes that means little breathing moments or pauses not pauses but like um a slight slight variation in tempo as you're leading into the new section or perhaps it's a really sweet part and you might reduce the tempo by a couple of beats per minute to 
yeah. really get into the, the vibe of it. And professional classical pianists do that all the time. And in fact, it's sure. what it's what sets them apart. Like one of my favorites is Andre Watts. And he he has a very specific style. Or of course Vladimir Horowitz, who yeah. will take a moment to, to really express the piece. Um, but I started noticing I would get remarks on my score sheets and points taken off for having done that sort of thing. And I wasn't just like going freestyle. I was, it was all within the framework that my teachers and I had agreed yeah. on, you know? But I started thinking, well, that's no fun. I don't want to play like a metronome. I know I changed the tempo ever so slightly, but I liked it that way. <laughs> that's my yeah. style. Um, and that had a little bit to do with my decision when I was 14 to stop competing because I knew at that point I did not want to go to Juilliard or any of uh, any music conservatory and pursue a career as a classical pianist. It, I didn't find it expressive enough or challenging enough in a way. Right. And I also very much wanted to get out to LA and see if I could make it as an actor. Yeah. And well, yeah. Asked. And it sounds like they didn't allow you to kind of, you couldn't have any individual expression. You were expected just to play the, the piece as it was written. I think as you get to be a little older, that is the case. And I've, I've spoken to other pianists about that and and violinists and because there's violin competitions and all of the <laughs> different categories but i think that's a thing and i think it's probably also a thing with other disciplines like ballet that when you're really little like a child child and you can express yourself in a way that is unique in a in a discipline that is that makes a, an impression and then maybe when you're a teenager you're expected to be more a hundred percent quote unquote correct right and then you get through your conservatory years and then you start out in the professional world and of course if you're going to get a job with a ballet troupe the the Ballet dancers who are the most expressive and the most original are the ones that get the get those positions and get front right. and center. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when you when you said dance competition, what popped in my head was more like if you've ever seen the movie Breaking, when you know you had the two the two dancers would run into each other and then challenge each other to a dance off. That was more what I was thinking when you're playing piano. So you just sit down, you know, kind of rip something off and then it's up to the next person to try to match it. And if they don't, you win. That's what I was thinking. Yes. In my head. Yeah. They, they score you. They score you. It's more like gymnastics in that way. Um, you walk in, you have to present physical copies of your sheet music to the judges. It's usually three or four judges. Yeah. And so you hand them your sheet music. And that's how they look. They they pay attention. Like, Sounds stressful. Everything. It's pretty stressful. It was actually great preparation for the rest of my life, although I didn't know it at the time. It was, I mean, auditioning and performing on stage and playing my own songs and doing stage well, and, like and plays. You've been, doing, you've been basically doing acting and playing as a musician the whole time. I mean, it was never one of those things where you're like, I did this and then I did this. You've basically been doing both your whole career. Yes, although my own music took a little while longer, but playing music was always something that was a huge part of my life. Yeah. I played piano for a living when I moved to LA. I was able to support myself with background music. So I would play classical pieces as well as all the jazz and show tunes that one would expect when they go to a lobby lounge or a restaurant. Of course. <laughs> Did you ever do the uh, the piano bar type of thing? Yeah. 
That's what I did. Um, oh, I wasn't allowed to play in a bar per se because of my age. Right. But I was allowed to play in restaurants or lounges where they served alcohol. It's a yeah. subtle distinction. So I, my most steady job was at the Regent Beverly Wilshire Hotel, right. where Pretty Woman was set. You know, I was gonna say that's that's a pretty good location. If you, if you gotta have a job to start out, that's not bad. It was wonderful. I was there for two and a half years, and that was how I paid my rent and all my bills. And I f still feel so incredibly grateful that I was able to support myself in that way. And then yeah, as years went on and I got acting gigs and was working as an actor, time and time again, my piano playing and my singing was worked into a character that I played. But it wasn't my own music, which is a very different and scarier and more vulnerable <laughs> kind of place, but yeah. much more do you, rewarding. Do you play any instrument outside of the piano? I know a few chords on the guitar and yeah. when I have time or when I make time, that makes me very happy to just figure out songs that I love on the guitar. And I've written a few songs on the guitar. Um, there's actually a song on this album, this new album that was written that I wrote on the guitar, just kind of with a few of the chords that I know and then a few chords yeah. I kind of stumbled upon and had to then figure out what they were on the piano so that I could play it live. So did you pick up the guitar while we were on quarantine last year? Was that your I, side hobby? That's a good, it's a good guess. I have been kind of in fits and starts learning a chord or two for years. Yeah. <laughs> But yes, during during our lockdown last year, starting in March 2020, when I began playing shows on Stage It, I used that opportunity as a chance to practice the guitar a bit more dil diligently so that I could stumble my way through a guitar song on Stage It. Yeah. Because it, it was such a beautiful, it is such a beautiful outlet it gives me a chance to perform for hundreds of people at once who are all across the world. Yeah. And, and yet I feel, I feel safe enough and free enough to do things that I wouldn't do if people had paid, you know, a ticket price to attend <laughs> a show of mine, I would not bring out my guitar. I wouldn't subject yeah. people to that. They've paid good money to be there. <laughs> you know, on stage it, it's pay what you want. So some people are generous and pay good money to be there. And other people yeah. literally pay 10 cents to get in. And that makes me so happy. But it's also like, I can take out the guitar. And then people started requesting, hey, would you learn such and such on the guitar? Like the Rose, the Bette Midler song. Yeah. And that happens to be super easy on the guitar. So really, what a joy it was to be able to play it and get my way through it. And <laughs> it also forced me to practice a bit more. Well, yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. That's, that's good. That's, that's great. So, so the new album, the conduit that comes out, is it the 24th? Yes. September 24th. Right. It is out in the world. Yeah. 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 So we've been listening at the, at the house. Cause that's, Anytime we have somebody on that's a musician, we play it to see what the grandkids are going to think about it. If if they dance, that's that's a pass. If they don't if they don't dance or they get distracted, that's a fail. So you were a pass. I enjoyed that. Yeah. Yeah, we had some dancing going on. That is the biggest compliment because I know you shared earlier how old your grandkids are and they they just either like something or they don't at that age. That's right. And they will dance. It doesn't matter what genre. <laughs> if it makes no. them feel good, you can tell. Once they start stomping around, because it's, it's a very stomp heavy dance, you know they love it. That is, <laughs> I'm just overjoyed at that news. Thank yeah. you. So, so their favorite 
you know, based on this very unscientific uh, poll was the, um, I don't want to get it right, talk to you. That's the one, that's the one they really like to dance to. <laughs> if I had to guess, I would have guessed it was that one. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. they really, really enjoyed that one. Did, did you write all the songs, the music on this album? I wrote all of them and the words. Um, there's a few of them that I have co-writers on as well. Yeah. Talk to you, I wrote all on my own. Um, Chasing Shadows, I have a co-writer. And Down She Goes, um, a writer out of Nashville. And then The Ocean was co-written by two country writers. We actually, nice. uh, usually when I play it, just me and the piano, it's it's got a much more kind of country ballad vibe about yeah. it. And yeah. we wrote it to pitch to some very specific male country artists. Um, and then we were just left with a song that I love. So yeah, kind of turned it into this trance pop thing. Yeah. Have you always written your own music or is that something you kind of developed over time? I have always dabbled in it, always dabbled. Right, right. Um, even as a child, I I wrote about five or six songs between the ages of like 18 to 23. And <laughs> I mean, some of them are still okay. Some of them yeah. not, no. But I was, I was getting into it and i started talking to a producer at that time and we got into the studio a little bit together and i was very excited and then um i think i didn't know yet that if you really want to be a singer songwriter you need to write every day right. and you need to write not five or six songs you need to write hundreds of songs and many of them most of them need to be songs that perhaps nobody will ever hear. Right, right. I didn't, I didn't know that. I thought, hey, I wrote five songs. I can do an EP. <laughs> and, <laughs> and this guy was just being honest. And he called me one day and he said, you know, you have a gift for this. And one day when you figure out what it is you want to say and you write many more songs, you're going to be, you're going to be unstoppable, I think was what he said. But he said, you're not there yet. Let's pick this back yes. up in about a year and just, you just keep writing. And then I'm not, I'm not saying they, the songs aren't good. I'm just saying you're not ready yet. Yeah. Of course, That's good advice. 23, it was great advice. He was right. But at age 23, I, all I heard was, oh, I guess he doesn't want to work with me. <laughs> <laughs> so sadly, I, I let that dissuade me and I yeah. didn't I didn't keep writing and I did get very busy acting wise but um, it wasn't until my early 30s that I just suddenly had this realization after believing I was going to put out albums and tour with a band I just yeah. suddenly thought well wait a minute I have to do this I have to write the songs I have to have to actually make that happen or it's not going to happen and yeah. once i realized it i just started writing and and the songs just flowed out and now i've written hundreds and hundreds of songs yeah that's amazing where do you keep all of them they're all on my computer yeah um yeah they're all i have i have Tons Not of, carrying around like an old notebook with everything written down in it. No, no. I find for myself that writing on a keyboard of some sort is much better because yeah. when I get an idea for lyrics, even if I don't have a melody with those lyrics, the words often tumble out much faster than I can legibly write them in my handwriting. So yes. I find it very inspiring to just sit at a computer or even on my phone with my thumbs and I can write those <laughs> lyrics very quickly and then either finish the song in the moment or come back to it another time. Yeah. I'm very I impressed with that. Pretty much That's... every day. 
Yeah, it's it sounds like you have to be disciplined in that type of writing, just like you would if you're writing a book, you know, or a, a script, whatever it is, and and just make yourself do the work. You can't just yes. occasionally write. You gotta you gotta always be writing. Yes, and yeah. also be disciplined at. I've learned at this point that if I don't write it down, especially if I'm in the middle of something and I don't have time to go sit at the piano and finish it in that moment, I've got to take out my voice memo on my phone and hum it <laughs> or just take two minutes to quickly write down the title and some of the lyrics that came to me with that idea. Because if I don't, with the crazy kind of schedule I have most days, I'll just forget it. And that, yeah, you'll lose it. I don't, I don't like losing ideas. Yeah. yeah, You'll lose it. So you, so you've got a video out for chasing shadows. Yeah. And if, if you're up to it, I'm going to show it. If that's all right. That would be wonderful. I love it. I love it. You're, you've got, you've got just a a wonderful voice. It's very, uh, very uh, soothing. I I just, I I love your voice. on songs and this one especially uh was my favorite thank so, you so yeah so i'm so i'm so happy you had the video because i wanted to show that all right so if i can get the screen to share we will show it so it's chasing shadows i'm gonna let my dog back in while yeah you do that while i'm bringing that up <laughs> sweetheart You don't want to see too opinionated. Let's get the uh, shadows. Here we go. All right. Now we'll get it started. Can you hear it? Yeah, there it is. Friday the 13th, nobody noticed. It was exactly a month to the moment when all of the world stood still. When all of the world stood still. Parked in the lot and we met at the subway, laughing cause nobody does that in LA. A handwritten map for a guide. We watched as our station went by. And see we were already wrong Connecting the dots where the lines don't belong Too late to stop, we were already off and running Chasing shadows Racing back despite the time Tracing jagged lines 
back despite the time tracing jagged lines. That's so good. Thank you. Thanks for playing. I love, oh, yeah, for sure. I, I love the way you show your hands playing. I, th I, I don't know why, but I, I thought that was a really nice touch. Really, uh, really, it's such a beautiful song. Thank you. Yeah. It's one of so, the most piano-driven ones, surely. Yeah. Um, That's probably why I liked it. My mother plays... Uh, piano and I always uh, you know grown up enjoyed listening to her play and that, that's, that's probably what it is is that it's, it's hmm. got a lot of piano in there thank you <laughs> uh, so so the album is the conduit it's coming out on the 24th which is a week from Friday um, yes. but then you're going out on tour right after that that starts October 1st yes exactly yeah oh, I can't wait to play for people in person again it's exciting. Oh, it's amazing. I, I just, yeah. Well, I, and it's, it's and, and you're the headline, right? Yes. Yeah, that's a big deal. That's yeah. I mean, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I went out on tour in May of 2019. Um, so that was my first tour, you know, as a, yeah. headliner in in these you know singer songwriter type venues so yeah it's it's a big deal um it's an incredible feeling to just be able to see people yeah and watch them listening and in some cases see them singing along to the words and all of it and the yeah, meeting nice. even though we're in the time of covid i believe we can safely do the meet and greets and yeah the intention as of now i'm i don't plan to change it yeah good for well, you for doing them that's that's the uh, some of the best stuff is when you actually get to meet the performer that's that's great I, it's for me one of my favorite parts because yeah. as much as i love performing for people and seeing them out there experiencing the music to actually meet people and listen to what some of this the songs have meant to them yeah. in their own life kind of gives the song new life for me when i that's great it. yeah for sure we're uh my wife and i are, are hopeful that we'll be able to get you in uh, columbus you're coming through uh, columbus so we're crossing our fingers oh i hope so thank <laughs> you for trying to come yeah yeah for sure yeah i'm very excited about it next time we got to get you Charleston, West Virginia, or Huntington, Morgantown, any of those. Okay. I would love but to. Yeah, Columbus is fairly close, a couple hours away from us. So that's uh, that's the plan. We're going to try to catch you there. Oh, thank you. I hope that you can. Yeah, me too. Me too. So in addition to, to all the acting, all the, all the uh, singing, all the piano playing, now you've written a book. Yes. <laughs> Because you, you were, you know, you didn't have enough on your plate. Yes. Yes. I wrote a book. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, a yeah, yeah. Now that one, I, I know I've got the, uh, the picture of it up. So let's bring it up. So small changes is the name. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. So tell me about that. What, uh, what is small changes about? Small changes is my belief based on my own experience, my own life, and my own journey in finding balance and peace around yeah. 
food, body image, um, presence of mind, centeredness, and yeah. all of that. And my belief that when I go about those changes, when I go about finding all of those things through small steps rather than waking up and saying, okay, I will never do X, Y, and Z ever again, as long as I live, <laughs> or I will never eat this again. And if I do, then I failed. And I guess I better just keep on eating that because now I'm a failure. You know, all of that is, it doesn't work. And right. I started thinking about how in my own life, I used to set those rigid rules for myself. I used to go on crazy <laughs> diets or bad cleanses and this or that. Yeah. And then of course I would bounce up and down with my weight and all kinds of unhealthy relationships with with eating and, and what I thought I should and shouldn't right. eat. And I just feel like finally I figured it out. I eat I eat what I want and I eat things that make me really happy and yeah. I don't beat myself up if I eat more than I should on one day because then the next day I won't because there's no That's rules right. and instead there's all these things I've learned and a lot of different a lot, a lot of different recipes I make on a regular basis that I have made for most of my close friends, many of whom include things in their diet that I don't like red meat or dairy and stuff like that. I don't consume those anymore, but my belief is that labels and, um, putting rigid regulations on yourself is a lot less effective than just yeah. saying, hey, maybe I'll give this recipe a try. Maybe I'll cut back a little bit on eating certain things that are high in cholesterol and just see if I if I enjoy it. Then maybe I could yeah. eat a bit more of these foods and still <laughs> eat the stuff that I love. Um, and the weird thing is, as I started finding this balance, people started coming up to me on an almost daily basis, pre-COVID that is. Right, right. <laughs> um, and people would stop me in the airport and ask me what I was eating or why I, like, what do I do to my skin to make it look the way that it does? Yeah. Or even just, why are you, why you seem so happy? I noticed it from across the way. Why is it like, what do you do? And that makes me so happy. Um, and so I started thinking and, and that would lead to a conversation about, well, this is what I'm eating. And no, it's not on the menu at the airport restaurant, but <laughs> I found they had avocado and they had beans and they had they had greens as a side. Right. And so I asked them to put it all together and I have this delicious meal that is healthy and right. happens to be plant-based and is going to keep me full so that I don't land at my destination feeling ravenous and shaky and grab a bag of potato chips. Yeah, yeah. Um, or grumpy. <laughs> You won't so, be grumpy coming off the plane. No. And, and anyway, it's, <laughs> it's important for your health and it's important for your mental well-being to eat foods that make you genuinely happy. Anyway, I, I started thinking about all that. And then, and then a book agent happened to come into my life and ask if I had any ideas for a book. And, wow. and this idea was born and developed really in fits and starts over several years. Um, and then when we finally got it to a place where my agent felt it was ready to take it to publishers, it just so happened to coincide with the beginning of that lockdown last year when we got the offer. So it was March, 2020, I got the offer to turn it into a book. It had very specific deadlines. It was already coming out October 5th as of last March. So <laughs> what better time to sit alone and, right? and write? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. Well, you didn't have time to fool with the guitar. You're writing a book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love the fact that you're um, sharing it because because most of us struggle somewhat with food, different degrees, but most of us struggle at least a little bit, you know, with uh, self image, our relationship with food. I, I think that's terrific and really important to share what has worked for you because it, it can help people. Thank you. I, yeah. I, I believe that is true and I, nothing would make me happier than to be able to help people and specifically to not, I, I don't lecture people in real life. I don't, and I don't believe by any means that it's my way or the highway and I don't have right. the answers. But I know from my own experience talking to friends and then having them tell me later, hey, I tried that thing that you <laughs> shared with me. And lo and behold, now I'm doing this, that, and the other. Yeah. And I just, I want to help if I can. And I love that. Uh, yeah. I'm really yeah. grateful that this book is out and just setting the intention and the prayer every day that maybe it will reach some people and help them. Yeah, for sure. For sure. How many photos did you have to go through to come up with the ones for the book? <laughs> um, the photos on the inside? You mean the, the insert? Photos? No, just on the cover. Oh, well, that was that was a wonderful photographer friend of mine who lives yeah. here in Nashville as well. And we just we did a photo shoot over the span of two days. Um, oh, some nice. photos in a studio that he found where we took the photos for the book cover. And yeah, there were hundreds of them, hundreds and hundreds. Yeah. And then- That was probably the, fun though. It was so fun. Yeah. And also just utterly surreal to think, because we had just done the photo shoot for my album. He's the same photographer who did all the photos for The Conduit. Yeah. Um, we did that the week before and that was believable to me that I had a, an album coming out because I've had several of them. <laughs> but then to be in a studio taking photos that were going to be on the cover of my book. Yeah, wow. That was not, um, I couldn't make that compute in my head. Yes. So I wasn't sure. <laughs> I didn't, I, it was just really odd and beautiful for me. But I was grateful that it was a friend of mine taking the photos. And well, grateful yeah. that Ernest, my dog, was there too. And he made the cover. <laughs> he got a little I, I saw. He, yeah, he looks really good. He came out and posed. It was amazing. You can't, uh, good old Ernest, you can't beat that. Like no, it. he made it better. <laughs> so, there so he the is. is. Yeah, there he is. So the book <laughs> is Small Changes, and it comes out October 5th? Yes. And, and where is it available? Is it everywhere? It's just about everywhere that that you buy books. Definitely on Amazon and Barnes and Noble, and um, it's in my hometown of Nashville. You can actually order uh, signed copies of it through. Are you hand delivering them? I'm not hand delivering them. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Probably not doing that. That's a pretty <laughs> but I am good idea. Every well, single okay. will really yeah, be that's, nice. that's that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> I mean, if you know, if you if you're not gonna make yourself go to the door, I guess signing is pretty pretty good alternative. Yes. Yeah, I figured. Yeah, <laughs> I don't hear. <even. laughs> somebody at the door. She said she wrote a, a book that you bought. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh, so, and it's so, also an audible book. I I did the oh, audio really? version of it, and I I read the whole thing myself. That's which, awesome. Which, did you sit so in awesome. a closet while you did it? I went to an actual professional sound very stage. Nice. Yeah, yes, with nice. a microphone and everything. And Ernest was there too, as quiet mm -hmm. as could be. Never once did he bark or make a sound that we had to redo. That's impressive. Yeah. yeah, I love Ernest. knowing All that right. when people listen to the audiobook, Ernest is right there, even though they can't yeah. see him or hear him. 
Yeah, that's that's amazing. That's a, that's amazing, and that's not an easy job. Audiobook, not easy. I enjoyed it. That's I would great. I would be up for doing another, like you know, one that I didn't write. Well, when when I write my autobiography, I'll let you voice it. Okay, that sounds you know, like you have to fun. practice your West Virginia accent. <laughs> <laughs> I think I could do it. So when we have anytime we have a guest on. We play the where do you know them from game with the whole family, right? So, so I did that. I was like, I was like, I'm having Alicia Witt. Where do you know her from? So my oldest, my daughter, you know, day after Thanksgiving, she starts watching Christmas movies. And she's like, Dad, she's <laughs> done all the Christmas movies. <laughs> <laughs> and nice. she, I, I couldn't name them off, but she named it. A, a list of them and Aww. she's like she's great and all so she she knew you from that that was an easy one for her oh so then love I went the to, christmas movies Thank oh you. yeah yeah well and yeah I, I was supposed to ask do you do you have other christmas movies in the future i have two that are sort of in development okay. i do not have one at hallmark this year this is the first Ooh. year in You're branching out eight years i think that i yeah. don't i don't have one at hallmark um which is not you know i i love making movies at hallmark but yeah um but i don't have one coming out this year um unless something were to suddenly materialize for november but i doubt it at this <laughs> point <laughs> um but yeah i actually have two stories that i have written that oh exciting that are, yeah, I, I would love for them to get made. So we'll see what happens. We'll cross our fingers on that. She'll be excited. So then, so then I went to my mother. And so her choice of what, what, what first popped into her head, Sybil. Okay. Yes. Yeah. She's like, oh yeah. She said, I loved her on that. She loved that show. Thank and you. That, and it ran for several seasons. Oh yeah. Four years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So she remembered you from that. And then I went to my son, my oldest son, who does the podcast with me. And he just finished. It, it, it was an easy one for him, too, because he just finished um, Justified. So that's oh, what hey, Which I've been bugging him to watch. Yes, you were so good in that. That was a fun one. Yes. What great writing. What great writing. And that character, Wendy Crow. Where she She's started, she is so complicated. Those are my favorite kinds of characters to play. Yeah. Yeah, she started good. out one place and ended up somewhere else. And I was thrilled to get to play her every yeah. step of the way. Thank you. Well, you're yeah, you're very welcome. He also said to mention that you were really good on The Walking Dead. He remembered you from that too. Thank so, you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So, so for me, I've already told you, you know, I started watching it Dune, but I wanted to at least mention that I enjoyed you on Friday Night Lights. Thank you. Thought you did, Thank you. <laughs> I won't spend the oh. whole time just throwing up stuff that you've been in, but I wanted to mention a few of them. <laughs> I, I'll, I will say Friday Night Lights is one of those shows that every actor who's been on it will say yeah. that being on that show forever improved them as an actor. And really? I, I would say the same. Yeah. Did you know that about half of what ended up on the screen was improv? I did not. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. And not only that, and that was what the actors were told and encouraged to do. We had scripts yeah. with very specific dialogue and scenes, but we would we would be encouraged to kind of go go off that and add stuff or wow. some directors specifically would say just don't I know you've learned the scene but kind of don't say what's on the page say other things start in the same place and end in the same place but forget do you about prefer all. that or do you prefer just to go you know learn the script and go I can go either way with it yeah um I I think that some scripting is is good because I've also worked on more experimental projects where there is no script. I'm not 
convinced about that. But yeah. I, I think the way they did it on Friday Night Lights was incredible because the scripts were so good as they were. Yeah. And the dialogue was incredible as written. So it was kind of a hybrid, allowing the actors to come in having learned the lines so they could deliver them as written. And then they also came prepared to turn it into something else or add stuff. And then the way it was edited was kind of a combo. And then the other cool thing about Friday Night Lights is that the cameras were placed a lot of the time where the actors didn't even know where they were. And oh, often nice. no rehearsals. So you would just sit <laughs> there and feel like you're having a real face-to-face -face conversation with a human being without having a camera in your face. The camera would often be so far away that really? they'd be zoomed in on the faces, but you didn't know where they were, so it took away any sense of self-consciousness. Yeah, I, I could never be an actor, but that would help me if I didn't have something, you know, making it obvious that I was acting. I think it helps everyone. Yeah. We're only like, we're human beings. Uh, you know, we can, we can learn to ignore where the camera is, but we're always aware of it. Yeah. It's, That's so it's great. It's a luxury so working great. on Yeah. Yeah. Alicia, thank you so much. This has just been just a real blast for me. I, I really looking forward to, uh, to speaking with you. So fun. Thank you. It has been so fun speaking with you too. Thank you for asking to have me and thank you for this incredibly in-depth interview about so many things and such a- Oh, I can keep going. Fun. You're getting off easy. <laughs> <laughs> that just means you have to come back at some point. I would be honored to come back. Yes. Because I've got so many questions, but you're so busy. we got to hit all the stuff you're doing right now. We don't have time to talk about the past. We got to talk right now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got, let me, let me see if I can get them all um, straight. The album comes out September 24th. Yes. You've got the tour starts October 1st. And then the book is out October 4th? 5th. 5th, October 5th. <laughs> all right, I was close. I was close. Okay, yeah. so the, and then the, so you've got so much going on. So before I let you go, though, is there anything else? that you have upcoming that we can kind of keep an eye out for? Yes, I have two independent films. Ooh. One which is, um, I think we'll get a, a you know pretty wide release. It's called Alice yeah. and it stars Kiki Palmer and Common oh. and Johnny Lee Miller. Oh, and, just those guys, okay. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> what a cast. What a cast, what a yes. script, what a story loosely based on a true story. Um, and then this is the setup for it. It's not, I'm not giving anything away, but yeah, um, it's set, it's set on what you believe is um, a plantation in times of enslavement. Oh. So that's what you think you're watching. And it focuses on this one enslaved woman, Alice. Yeah. And she it's horrific conditions and then she's out she escapes to find that um it's 1973. no way <laughs> it's loosely based on a true story that happened in the 60s are you serious i am serious yeah i want to watch that now when's that coming out i can't wait to see it and Talk about transfer. Sounds amazing. And when you when you see Kiki Palmer's performance, oh my goodness! I haven't oh, seen it yet. I've just seen what I was there for, you know. Yeah, yeah. But holy moly! Yeah, that um, sounds amazing. She produced it as well, and um, yeah, that's called Alice. So that's in the can, and I expect that will come out somewhat soon. Yeah, exciting. And there's that's another exciting. independent film I, I worked on um, right before lockdown last year and i think they're still in the post-production stage yeah but it's a very gifted um filmmaker named wendy mccomb who has had several indie films out already and it i played this 
absolute nightmare of a mother. <laughs> Her name is only mother in it, but it's going to be a thing of horror, I believe. You know it's bad when you're just you're just going by mother. <laughs> yes. Just plain mother. Oh uh, yeah. No, it's exciting. That's really exciting. Yeah. Have you I can't wait to see that one too. Yeah, I, yeah, definitely. Definitely want to watch both of those. Have you that found one's called Fuzzy Head. Head. I don't think I told you. Oh, you didn't? It's called Fuzzy, Fuzzy Head. Head. Yes. Oh, yeah. They've you already got an Instagram page up so that you can see little, yeah. I'll look that little horrific clips right now. <laughs> yeah. Now, it's, I was curious if, as, as you've went through your career, have you become more selective in the roles that you're choosing? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I'm more selective about the roles I choose and also um, when things come into audition for him, even more selective about the ones I audition for. Yeah. Um, that being said, I think it's it's been such a cool career that at this point, um, most of the things that come my way anyway to audition for are yeah. not only really good, really good and challenging, but also they're so varied. And I love that. That's right. the acting career I always dreamed of and tried to, tried to work towards. And I do most of my self tapes with my friend, Vanessa, who lives five minutes away, but it's easier to just do it <laughs> on FaceTime because we got so used to doing it that way yeah. during lockdown. Right. Um, so we have a whole system, but it's not unusual to have two or three auditions in yeah. a row where the characters are wildly different from one another. And that is that's fun. That's fun for me. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah. All right. So last thing before I let you go, um, where can we find you on social media? I am most active on Instagram. Alicia yeah, Witte there. Is, is me there. Um, <laughs> and I'm also, you know, I keep an eye on Twitter too. Alicia Witte there as well. And then Facebook, yeah. Alicia.wit. And... You're everywhere. Yeah, that's about it. I'm on TikTok, but I don't really... I well, you've got a TikTok. website too, right? Yes, my website is a great place to stay up to date on everything. And you can find all my tour dates there and yeah. a link to buy the book and buy the album. Um, that's alishawitmusic.com. Yeah, that's so good. Do you do you paint? Well, it's funny you ask. I I did I would have said no, but I did this really fun painting class about two years ago that a friend of mine who is a professional painter yeah. she started giving these classes and her philosophy is that anyone can paint you just need a few pointers and so she does she's not doing it at the moment but she she did this thing where she had five or six people who were interested in painting but wouldn't call themselves yeah. painters and right <laughs> we all ended up with something with her guidance and her she would show us some techniques and have us apply those techniques to our canvases um but we all created something and i i made a painting that i felt really proud of and i, I put it up in my living room oh good for you yeah, yeah. i was curious because because i found that creative people tend to be creative in a lot of different artistic areas so i'm just curious if you i really you enjoy it. painting and i think I can see a version of things where if I had a little more space and a little more time, I would be happy to paint on a much more regular basis. It's fun. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Well, Alicia, thank you so, so much. This has been such a such an honor and a pleasure and definitely you have to come back. Thank you. That's a deal. I would be happy to come back. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're so welcome. Okay. Hold on. Hold on one. All right, so that was the incredibly talented, multi-talented Alicia Witt. I'm so, so thrilled. I think I held it in check pretty good because people who watch the show, you guys know, I'm a fan. And I try to get people on the show that I'm a I'm fan of. And uh, she's definitely near the top of the list. 
I would have, I didn't want to, I didn't want to tell her, but in Dune, she was my second favorite character, which you'd be like, oh, that's, that's not really a compliment, second, second favorite character. Well, you know, I mean, look, my favorite character, you can see him over top of my shoulder there, Patrick Stewart. But next to Patrick Stewart, she was number two. That's, that's pretty good. But I've, I've enjoyed her in so many things, but she has so much going on. You know, there's, I was trying to balance talking about some of the things that she has done that I loved and that the family loved and making sure that we hit on all these terrific things she's doing. She is just an amazing musician. I mean, her piano playing, beautiful voice. Her piano playing is, uh, that's worth it just by itself. If that's all she did, she would still be amazing. It's, it's so, so, so good. And I definitely am looking forward. I, I let my mother know that I was going to uh, uh, bring some of her music over so she could uh, she could hear it because she loves the piano playing too. So, so just real excited. But just real quick, I wanted to mention before I go, some of the things that we loved her in that I didn't get to, uh, to bring up. Um, Mr. Holland's Opus. Love that movie. I think it came out in the mid nineties. Absolutely terrific movie. She was in, uh, Orange is the New Black. She had an appearance on Supernatural, um, House of Lies. She played Morgan Le Fay in The Librarians, which was I, when the kids were growing up. That was one of the shows that we watched together. So, so we definitely, uh, enjoyed her in, uh, that. Um, she was on The uh, Mentalist. You know, she had uh, just a terrific part on uh, Ally McBeal where she sings with or, or plays with uh, Randy Newman. Love that. Um, she was Madonna's girlfriend in Four Rooms. If you've ever seen uh, that, she um, there was a movie I wanted to mention. Um, oh, Two Weeks Notice with uh, Hugh Grant and Sandra Bullock. Really enjoyed her in that. She had a, a role in Vanilla Sky with Tom Cruise. And she was in this really early in her career. She was in this movie called Fun. She played Bonnie. That it was just amazing. You could tell from that movie she was she was really going to do well in the acting business. Just, just so good. Thank you guys so much for coming back week after week. I appreciate that so much. I, I know there's so many podcasts and so many other things you could be spending your time with but you keep coming back to us. I, I'm so, so, so thankful for that. Definitely don't take it for granted. Appreciate that you put uh, put up with my, you know, fanboy nonsense and my shenanigans and, and uh, over-talking at times. So thank you so much for that. If you haven't done so yet, you could really help us out if you go to our YouTube channel, MeisterCon Pod, like and subscribe. Really appreciate that. You can also go to our website, MeisterCon.com, we have, we're pretty close to 300 episodes of the show now. Most of those are interviews. I guarantee you'll find multiple people um, that that you enjoy and that you're fans of. So please check that out. There's also a ton of episodes that's just me and Brett um, talking about whatever nerdy topics we're in the mood for that week. So I think I think you'll enjoy some of those as well. Brett, such a talented writer. He's got a blog on there. It's geeky. It's fun. It's uh, uh, it's funny. So definitely check that out. And it'll also have any shows, conventions, anything like that that we're covering um, that you can kind of follow us at, uh, on there as well. Thank you guys so much. Until next time. Bye, everybody.